Hello, I'm John from Hudson Forest Equipment, here at our local uh, Kubota dealer up the road from Hudson Forest Equipment. And we're here to set up a 45M winch, skidding winch, on the back of a 60 horsepower tractor, three-point hitch model. And uh, we're going to go over how to unload the winch from your truck, to setting it up on the tractor, cutting the PTO shaft off the proper length, and training the cable on the winch. So to get started, for transport, when you pick it up from your local dealer or pick it up from Hudson Forest Equipment here, this is how we set it in your truck. We will stand it up. If you request it on a pallet, we will send it on a pallet. But this is the easiest way to handle it. Stand it up in the back of your truck and anchor it four points. Keep the pressure pulling straight down on the winch and they travel for hundreds of miles sta stable like that. Uh, safest way to transport it. You would need it to travel long distance on a pallet, we could lay it down on its face. That's the other way, but you got to take the cage off so you don't do any damage to the winch if you're requesting that. So that would just be one more step in the setup, but we're not going to cover that today. So to start off, we've got it anchored in the truck properly. Next, we're going to unload it. So to unload it, we will hook a chain on the center point on your three-point hitch on the back of the winch right up here. And we'll get the tractor out on the front end loader and we'll just raise it straight up in the air and we'll drive the truck out from underneath it. That prevents damage to the winch, your truck, and the tractor all. So you're not driving it around with it dangling off the, the bucket. So we will definitely show you how to do that. A um, couple things here on the back of the winch we want to go over quick. It comes just like this. This is brand new. has a cover over the PTO shaft, which we'll have to remove. This hanger here, everybody asks what that is, that's the PTO shaft hanger. So when you get it mounted and you take it off your tractor, your PTO shaft hangs right there on that hook. Easily stores out of the way. This little trap door in the back, this is for if you ever have to change a cable. You open this trap door, the cable you pull all the way out, you loosen the nut inside there, pull the cable off the drum. And then you would feed the cable back in to here, tighten your nut up, and wind up your new cable and train it properly. So we'll get moving forward and we'll start unloading the winch. Okay, our straps are off. Now we're going to hook our chain up. I normally just pull this pin out here. Run the chain up behind it. You normally pin that on the bottom hole for lifting. Double our chain up, then we'll bring the tractor in and lift it straight up off the truck. You never know where you're going to end up hooking on a new tractor or whatever, but this is a good safe hook right here. We'll have them hook it, hook it straight up. Come ahead forward. Okay, go ahead and raise it up. If you notice, I'm looking for the straightest pull here, so I'm going to have him curl his bucket once he gets it up in the air and come forward. Curl the other way, Ryan. There you go. Come forward. Okay. Now straight up. Just guide the winch with one hand as he's lifting. Okay, that's good. Now I'll jump in the truck and drive ahead. Okay, just stay right there, you'll be okay. Okay, now we're going to set the winch right on the ground. Nice and easy. When it gets close to the ground, I'm going to have it, once it starts touching, I'll have him back up so it straightens up. Okay, we're good. Now we're going to have him back up and we're going to mount it right onto the tractor. These hooks here, these are your connecting pins for your three-point hitch. They pull right out. The safety pin has got a chain on it, so it stays right with the machine. These are class one or class two pins, as you see. 
The pin is rated for a class one or a class two. Top and bottom holes. Either one you can hook. And the same thing on your top when you got a class one and a class two pin. Bring it on back, Ryan. We're good. We may have to do some adjusting on the three-point hitch to get it to spread to the right distance for our hookups, but uh, we'll get there when we get the tractor in place. You see they don't spread far enough, so now we've got to spread the hitch on the tractor. Uh, I don't know how these pins work. There we go. Most tractors these days are all set up like this. The older ones, may, you may have to take a bolt out and reset them. We're going to mount to the inner one here. This is going to be our mounting slot on this one because if we go way out here, we're too close to the tire. Okay, so if you had longer hitches, you could come out further. But this is the slot we're going to hitch in on this tractor. So we get that basically set. And then we line up a pinhole. And we've got room to move. There is two a slotted in here too, so if you got to move it a little bit, you've got room to wiggle it in and out as you're making your hitch. See that? Okay, we should be set there. This side here, I'm gonna bring in, put it in the slotted hole there, so you got a little wiggle room. I'm gonna bring them back a little bit. Can you lower it a little bit, Ryan? Okay, good. Bring her back. Okay, raise it up right there, Ryan. We're going to hook in our top hole on this. You know what? We're going to have to go to the other hole. That's your class one. This is class two ball, ain't it? Or you got a different one? Okay. This Kubota comes with an adapter that goes onto the pin for the class one to slide into the inner slot. So that way you can put it into the class one. So I've got to pull the tractor head, put this into the ball hitch here on the tractor. Like so. Now let me get the other one. We'll do the other side. Okay, there we go. Bring it on back, Ryan. Drop it just about a half an inch. A little bit. Okay, that one's in. Put the safety pin in. Over here, work the pin in, we're good. Now we've got to hook up our third link for the top pin. Well, this is where we got to do some adjusting. So we're going to spin this out. Get it to the right length. Now well, this winch comes with the pin for the top. So your other one that comes with your tractor you just put in your toolbox. Now if you got a cab on your tractor, adjusting this third link is pretty critical because if you raise the winch up and you don't have it adjusted properly, you could take out your back window with the cage on the winch. So if you got a cab and your rollover bars, you got to be aware of them. Now we hooked on the top hole down below, so we're going to hook on the top hole up here. That keeps your winch balanced properly on the tractor. You can hook to the lower one if you have to, but it's recommended to hook to the top one if you're in the top hole on the bottom.
There's our top link hooked. I usually tighten this up a little bit. Just make sure the top of the winch is moving. You can see it right there. And you know you got live tension. I'm going to push this back a little bit because we got the, the backstop or the rollover bar in the tractor and I don't want to hit it. So I'm going to push this out about an inch or two right there with that third link. And then I'm going to have them do a test raise to check everything. So right now we're going to do that. So go ahead, raise her up, Ryan. We'll check the, the height. That's it. We're perfect. Okay, go ahead and lower her down. Now we got to pick up the legs. Our legs on the winch are right here. These are the storage legs. So we just pull this pin out. Twist it so you can pull it all the way. And then lock it back in. That twist and lock right in there. There's a little pin lock. Okay, now we've got to set this the tractor on the three-point hitch here so that it doesn't sway. So go ahead and raise it up a little bit, Ryan. You want to keep it, that's good, just a little off the ground. So see how I can sway that? So now I'm going to set the pins here on the three-point hitch so it can't sway because you don't want all that flapping around. So there's my nearest hole there. Put the pin in that one. The winch is still centered good on the tractor. That's what you want to look for. Put your safety pins back in, always. Same thing on this side, my hole's already lined up. Safety pins in, and you grab the winch and shake it. And that's good. So, she's on the tractor now. Our next step is going to be setting up the PTO. Okay, our next step, now that we got the winch mounted on the tractor, is setting up the PTO to the proper length. Most any new equipment you buy today, whether it be a, a winch, a snow blower, or a sweeper, or whatever, if it's got a PTO implement on it, you normally have to cut them to length these days. They aren't pre-cut. So our PTO shafts are obviously on the back of the winch. They come with the winch. And on them, we put a sticker to remind you to make sure that it is cut to the proper length. And if you have any questions, you can always call us with it because it's serious. Uh, information to have this properly cut to the right length because property damage to your tractor, damage to the winch, or damage to an individual and we don't want that. What I just did here was took the instructions right off the PTO to show you how to cut it to length. And if you don't understand it, you can feel free to call us, like I said, with the number on the sticker. So we're going to be moving forward to that. Okay, moving forward, now it's time to set up our PTO shaft for the proper length. You're going to need a few tools for that. A round file, I use a chainsaw file and a flat file, a sharpie, a little hook end tool with a sharp point on it for dismantling the PTO, a flat screwdriver if you don't have that will work, a tape measure, and a sawzall with a, or a hacksaw with a metal cutting blade. Okay, we've identified which end of the PTO shaft goes to the tractor, which end goes to the winch. So now at this point, we're going to take the PTO shaft apart and I want to show you that the spline is a certain shape in there and it has to go back together the same exact way. You can set it offset a little bit but it'll start but may not go so do not force it if it doesn't go. We'll get to that later when I cut it but they do slide right back together nice and simple once they're lined up properly. Boom right back in. So Next we're going to remove the safety caps, the protective caps off the winch and off the tractor since they're both brand new. You slide that plastic cap off the PTO shaft. Same thing on the tractor. A little excess grease on there which always comes in handy. Um, normally I just grab some grease but since we got some here we don't need much. I take that excess grease right off of there and put some on the uh, PTO shaft that goes onto the winch. Therefore, it'll slide on easy because the tractor is greased from Kubota, but the winches are not. Now that we've got that, we're going to mount each individual half on the equipment. So the PTO shaft to go on the tractor, apart. PTO shaft on the winch, apart. And then we'll measure it for the length to get it cut to the proper length. To mount the PTO shaft on the tractor or the winch, there's a detent button on the side of it on the coupler head. You push that button in. And that releases that so it'll slide over the groove on the PTO shaft. So basically line it up, find it where it starts on the spline. 
depress the button there once you feel it slide on pull back and make sure that it's locked into that groove on your winch tractor side same thing depress the button when you slide it together these shafts are brand new so everything's pretty tight you hear it click on there she is she's on there now is the critical part what we're looking for here is the overlap just bring your sharpie and you take the two PTO shafts and you line them up like this okay we don't want this bottom here to come up into the yoke that's why you have to cut it to length if it does it'll it'll throw the yokes or bust the yokes right out of your PTO shaft or damage something possibly so we want to be two inches back from this collar here on this shaft so when it slides all the way down this will be about the closest point that the winch will be to the tractor when you raise it it's actually going to pull away a little bit so this is basically our lowest point you want to go two inches beyond this point here so so I take the sharpie and I'll mark it and then I can check my measurement just as an educated guess I'll bet I'm pretty close to my two inch mark Yeah, we're a little bit short. And then we want to do the same thing on this end. Now I'm marking the plastic here. We've got to transfer that mark over to the iron too on the inside. And I'll show you. So the same thing here. We're going to come back our two inches. From that collar. On this shaft. So we're again overlapping two inches back my mark is right there double check well, we gotta add a little bit that's why I got the tape to double check your two inch mark so there we are now that we've done that we've got to remove them from the tractor and the winch again okay now that we've got the PTO shaft marked in place on the on the implement and the tractor we're going to come over here. I got it on the tailgate of the truck. You don't have to have no big fancy bench or nothing, but it's a little easier sometimes. But uh, we're going to get this cut. So first of all, before you dismantle a PTO to cut it, you want to measure from the end of your steel to your mark. On this one, I'm reading four and three quarters. So when you go to put this back together, you want the steel out longer than the plastic like it is here. The reason for that I only leave a quarter inch on each side. The reason for that is so you can start the steel together and not fight the plastic tube at the same time. So that gives you half an inch of, of metal to slide into each other before you have to align the two plastic sleeves because it can be tough sometimes if, it does, if you got them both at the same exact length. You're trying to line up two opticals at the same time and it doesn't work well. So therefore I marked it. I measured three and four and three quarters here to my mark. So then I come back over here and I write it right on the shaft. I'm going to add my quarter on this side. So I'm going to back that measurement off. So I'm going to go four and a quarter, half on this cut from the end of my steel when I mark it after I remove the sleeve. On this one, my measurement is going to be four and a quarter from the end of the steel to where I'm going to cut the steel off on this one. Our plastic will be cut on the mark that we made when we had it on the implement. Okay, so now we're going to go through dismantling it pretty simple to dismantle it. You got your safety chains that you've got to remove. Keep your chains handy because you don't you got to have them. And you're going to depress to get the outer sleeve off. You depress this button here or you can pop that up with a screwdriver. Pop that off a little easier because I don't have fingernails slide that off I always stack everything in order as it comes off so just have a spot there stack everything as it comes off and you'll never have to worry about putting it back together even though the instructions are in the book this little hook tool is what I use to remove this ring with now when you put this ring back together I can see from the factory it wasn't actually done right because this tab right here should be in the slot of these 
so that snap ring completely seals. But we're gonna we'll fix that when we put it back together. So we'll just pop this ring off. Real simple. Once you get the ring off, set that right back on top of that. Next, you're going to remove the outer sleeve, the cuff cover, what we call. That'll slide right back and off of there. You can stack that right on there as well. Now we've got the inner cuff collar, and that's just nothing held on but just snapped together. It's a piece of plastic. So you open that up, and there's there's holes in this black plastic that line up with this, so you have to put it back together the same way. See the lock-in notches? That locks inside that plastic ring. So now that we remove that, remove that, this can stay right on. It's not a big deal. There's our mark we're going to cut for the plastic. And I wrote on my shaft where I'm going to cut that. So I'm going to mark that right now. Four and a half inches back. And that's going to be my cut line. We'll dismantle the other half just as well so we got them apart. Screwdriver, pop that up. Other side up. Slide that cuff off. Stack it. This one is put together right from the factory. See that tab I was talking about? That's that ring and that's where that has to lock in or you won't get it back together. That other cuff will not lock onto the winch or the PTO shaft if you don't have it in that slot. Again, slide that sleeve off, set it to the side. Now this one here, I had the shaft mark at four and a quarter. So we're gonna mark this one four and a quarter. And right at the end of that tape that's on the shaft, the danger tape. Four and a quarter. Okay. Oh, we'll go ahead and cut them off. Make your cut as square as possible. This is where your file comes in handy. Just file off them burrs so when you put it back together you ain't got to fight with any burrs going on to the plastic. Run your hand around it, you'll see if there's any sharp burrs. If there is, file it off, but that's good to go there. We'll cut the other plastic when you get them both cut at the same time. There's my mark. Again, get all the burrs off, take your file, go around the edges. Next, we're going to cut our shaft off. We got our mark already. Set it in position. This side is a little bit greasy because it's the inner slide. So a rag would be handy. But it's not too bad. Take your time cutting, get a nice straight square cut. One side cut off. Okay, we got metal filings all over this and making our cut on the steel, so you want to wipe that all off of there so you don't get it in your PTO shaft and your slide because that'll also cause binding. Now, see these burrs inside of here and on the outside? These are the ones we got to take off. Now, nothing has to slide on the inside of this one, so we don't have to worry about the inside burrs on this part of the shaft. This is the side that goes on to the winch, so we're just going to knock off this outside burr. Just lightly file over it. Flap it around, check it for any burrs. I usually check it without a glove on as well to make sure there's nothing burring there. Nice and smooth cut. We're good to go. Now we're going to cut the other half. 
Okay, now on this shaft, the other shaft has to slide inside of it. We can see the filings in there. Kind of tap any excess out. Keep the shaft pointing forward down. And now you always take the file, my rat tail file, and kind of sweep any of them shavings that got inside there on the grease and pull them out. You can actually see them come out onto the rag. Clean off that good. Then you use your round file to clean off the burrs on the inside of that because there's definitely a sharp burr, especially on the bottom where you came through with your cut. So you simply using a chainsaw file, you can use a rat tail file, works well. It's a curved back file. As long as you get them burrs off the inside of that, you're good to go. And then we'll wipe it out again as well. Again, I always take my glove off and double check that to make sure there's no burrs. It'll only fight with you later when you go to put the shaft back together. Again, check with the can. There we are. It's all cut the link. Now we just got to reassemble it. So reassemble it. Put your sleeve on first with the notches towards the front, towards your PTO knuckles. Slide that in there and you're going to expand that until them tabs lock in. You'll feel it slide up and butt the metal. I pinch this back together and make sure that's locked in. Next goes on our universal joint protector. Line it up with the hole for the safety chain and it slides right in there. Next is going to be our ring that holds that on, a snap ring. Best way to do that is line that up with your tab, your cutoff here. Screwdriver on one side and just push it and push that in and start that. It's much easier to just get under that ring and snap it right around in there. Next thing we got is this cover. Last piece to hold it. Snap in, make sure these buttons lock into the black tab. There it is. <coughs> Again, we line up the tab here for our safety chain with the hole in the cuff. Slide this forward. Keep this pinch together up here as much as long as you can to get your hand in there. I guess not be too forceful to get it in there and push from the PTO side. Just like that. Next, our safety ring goes on, or our snap ring to hold the collar onto it. Again, flat screwdriver. Get onto one side of your, your tab there, and then push that away so you can get your snap ring started into that slot. Get started. Run the ring, make sure your, your snap ring is right in there so you're seeing it like that. Put the safety chain coat. We'll get our last piece here. It covers up the safety ring so that can't pop out of there. Make sure that the tabs are locked in. Then we install our safety chain back on. Push in. Put it and pull it back. Same thing. Next safety chain. Make sure you put the other half on too. These safety chains hook to your implement and your tractor to keep this sleeve so that it doesn't spin with the PTO. As you can see, you can hold the shaft and this turns on the outside. And that's so you can't get wrapped up into a PTO shaft. Okay, so now we're going to slide the two halves back together. And eyeball and line up your spline. Slides right back together nicely. Okay. All right, now we're installing the PTO shaft onto the tractor. We've cut it to length. It's all set. I slid this end on, locked it on. I pull out on this collar to make sure we got the lock. So that we know the button detent is locked in. This is going to be close. See how close that is on there? That's just about how you should be. Nice and tight, within a half an inch. You can spin the PTO shaft on the winch to line up your spline. There it is. Slides on, detent your button, slide that on, pull back, make sure that it's locked on. Now we're locked on both sides. Take your safety chain, wrap it over the top of your third arm, 
That prevents this from turning when the PTO is engaged. The other side, we do the same thing. This distance won't change, so you can keep it up there nice and taut like this. Now the chain is all set, so we're ready to engage the PTO shaft on the tractor now. We're all set up, ready to go. So double check our chains, shaft's all hooked. We can fire up the tractor and we're gonna, we're gonna do some tests with it before we uh, go out and train the cable. So well, these are your control ropes. So the red rope is the brake release. So I pull that rope and listen for that click. What that does is release the brake. When you hear that snap, that's releasing the brake. It's actually gonna hold when you're skidding. Now when you pull the black rope, you don't want no tension on your red rope. I always let go of that one. And then pull your black one. That's engaging your clutch. You've seen that red rope pull backwards? That just released the brake. And now we're engaging the clutch. As I pull that, I can feel it. I know I've got to pull 65 pounds to fully engage this. Just like that. Now your clutch is fully engaged. You let off. When you engage this winch when you're pulling, you always want to pull all the way. If you got a log that you got to feather a little bit, that's okay. But if you feather all the time, you're going to burn your clutch up that's on the inside. So if you have to feather a little bit, just pull a little bit. Feather. 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 On your pull. That'll uh, usually get you around a stump or a tree that you may have to be cautioned around. Again, the red rope releases the brake. That puts your winch in free spool. Right now you can pull your cable out. As soon as you pull this black rope, that locks the brake. If the cable's out, you can actually start pulling from that point. We go to winch in, pull the black rope again, engage your clutch. 65 pounds of pull. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate now how to free spool out. Pull the red rope, release the brake, come around the back side, pull on your cable a little bit. It's pulling really easy. So now it tells me I need to adjust the drag on the brake. The reason for that is so if you have a load of logs on there and you drop it from this high and it hits the ground, it doesn't overspool the cable on your drum and cause a bird nest, which will later cause complications in your winch and cause damage inside. So we're going to come around the other side and we're going to set the drag and I'll demonstrate. A little locking collar here it's a thumb tab it's knurled loosen that up a little bit and turn this screw in now give it a couple turns and i'll pull the cable it's not enough i'm going to come back i'm going to turn this a little bit more what i'm looking for is about 35 to 40 pounds of pull on that cable just about right there we're pretty good i'm going to give it just a whisker more once you get that set, you're going to lock that lock nut back down so that can't move. Again, you loosen the jam nut, turn that clockwise towards you, then retighten your, your jam nut. And that sets the, the brake tension on your pull for your free spool. Okay, now we've got that set. I'm pulling on it. I'm pulling about 40 pounds of drag, which is perfect. Now that we have the drag set, we're going to take it over and hook it up to a log so that we can train the cable to the proper tension. So the chain comes all wrapped with these nice sliders on it. This is called a slider. Now I'm going to hook the winch cable up to a dead weight so we can pull the cable all the way out to 265 feet. Then we can winch it back in to train the cable properly. I always try and make the chain so it lays in a hook like that. If you got your hook the other way, the chain can always fall out. It's so like that, the chain lays into the hook. Now we're going to release the brake. So we're going to pull the red rope. Brake is released. Double check it. Pull your clutch. Pull the red rope again. Brake is released. And I'm going to pick the winch up now and drive forward to de-spool the cable. And the way I tell it's at the end of the cable is when I get close to the end, you see the red marks coming out on the cable. Raise the winch up, engage your tractor and drive forward. The winch will pull right out freely, no problem. 
Got a little tension because we have the drag set properly on the winch and that would be right. Now as you're pulling this out, you're break, basically breaking in the, the winch to uh, de-spool Once we get to the end, you can see to the hole driving forward. Keep an eye on that cable for any red cable coming out. There's the red, you can see it right there now. It's not real clear, but you got to keep a close eye. There it is. That's as far as you want to go with it now. Stop. You can also paint that cable a different color if you would like. So you can see it better in the woods. Sometimes blue, orange, or red makes it look stand out better. Okay. Now we've got the cable pulled all the way out from the tractor. We're about 265 feet away from it. We, we're going to hook on this log for weight to pull and uh, put tension on the cable as we pull in. So this is going to be like a normal hitch in the woods, just for a little education. Swing the chain under the log. I always have my hook fall over the back side. And again, have your chain rest into your hook like that. So when you pull, the chain will be like that. Again, come back to your slider. If you want to be sure, put that right on the ground. We hook right on the end of the cable, pull it through the, the, the latch, and there you have it. There's your hitch. As soon as we start pulling, you're going to get that, and you're hooked on. This thing here is a great invention. Whoever came up with this is called a wedge lock cable holder. So if you ever break your cable in the woods and you have to do immediate repair, I've cut cable with a good sharp axe before on a good hardwood block. One good blow and you can chop it off and get a clean cut if you have to. If you can't, you'll have to just thread it through and pull the, the, the frayed stuff through. You take this bolt out and then you drive this cable back out. And there's a wedge piece in there. It's kind of tapered shaped. Well, I was going to draw it on there, but I don't have my pen. But it's, it's wider at the bottom and tapered at the top. So when you drive that cable out, it all comes out together. To put a new cable in or to re-thread it, you run your cable back in and make a loop. You can make a big loop because it's going to be tight and get your end even. You'll cut this off later when you get it back and put that wedge back in that loop when you get it up tight. Hook it up to something, pull it tight, and it wedges right back in there and you're back in business. Okay, I've just engaged the PTO shaft. We got power going through our winch. On these new tractors, you got to push a button and flip the seat up to keep the PTO going. Our brake has already been released because we free spooled all the way out here. So now we're just going to grab the black rope, which is the clutch, and we're going to engage. Normally, training your winch, you're going to have a lot bigger log than that or a dead weight object than that size log. That's all we have to work with here, so that's what I'm showing you. But you should have at least 12 to 1500 pounds of pull when you're dragging something across the, to tension your cable. That log might go five to eight hundred pounds, but uh, initially you should have at least over a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds to pull in. If nothing else, you can set the brakes on your truck or your parking brake and pull it back slowly. So there's a lot of ways to do it, just get tension. So now I'm going to pull forward and we're just going to pull the cable in with the load on it all the way back to the winch and we'll be all set here for the training of the cable. You can see I just engaged it. I'm pulling 65 pounds and I'm just at hold. It's not even making the tractor grunt because we're not even pulling hardly nothing. Did you notice the PTO shaft is not turning? Never step on that when you're get dismounting a tractor or during operations. It's not a step, it's a PTO shaft. Always be safety conscious when you're we're running equipment. Now in the woods, if you're skidding, you want to be back away from that tractor. I always step back at least five to six feet at a minimum. But you got to watch your load and you got to watch your tractor. So there's two places you want to be watching when you actually are skidding a log in.
you can come in a little faster, just rev your tractor up. Normal operation of this is about 12 to 1500 RPMs is all you need to set your tractor at, just above idle. You don't have to have it wide open. If you do, you're going to damage something and you could pull too fast and, and get hurt. A stick come flying out of the woods at you or something. Be cautious when your log starts getting close like it is here. Closer and closer. And stop. You want to watch for this button coming up because if you go too far, you'll actually you keep pulling. You'll crush the end of this uh, housing here. We've had that happen with a few customers, but that's a live and learn lesson. Okay, and so now our cable is basically trained. We pulled in all the weight, so now we can actually go to the woods and start work. Now, if you notice, I'm going to pull the red rope and release the brake, and I'm going to pull out a little bit of cable. Check my tension. That's a little bit tight. So I'm going to loosen it up a little bit because we just broke things in by running that winch. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to loosen this up just a hair. I'm just checking my drag so when I do get in the woods I'm all set. Right about there we're good. Lock the nut back up. And now I'm going to demonstrate how you pick the log up in the air. Before I do that I want to show you this hitch on the back of the winch. This hitch is so you can take your trailer into the woods and the drop your trailer and then do your skidding so you don't have to make two trips in and out with your tractor and take the winch off and all that. There's a safety pin on the bottom of this pin here. You pull that out, pull that pin, and that hitch comes right out of there. You don't want that in there when you're skidding. Okay? And this actually stores on the winch. Put this pin back in. Pull the other pin out. And there's a slot right here in the winch for that. Mounts right up in there like this. Slides right up in that slot. Put your pin in. I put the safety pin to the rear. So brush or something, don't catch it when you're in the woods. And there's your storage spot for your hitch. Now I'm going to bring this log, I'm going to hook short like I would be in the woods for a hitch. Hook as short as I can. So to hook as short as I can, I'm going to go to the furthest eyelet because that's going to be the highest pull. I'm going to hook that as short as I can right to the log, get it up within a couple inches, and I'm going to demonstrate pulling that log up in the air how you would drop a hitch in the woods or at your landing. So we'll pull it in a little bit. It's in free spool. we we'll winch it up. We're going to hit the log off the ground just like that. That's how you'd like to skid. So then when you raise up your three-point hitch, that log's going to be well off the ground. And that's what you want. There's a proper hitch. If you're coming down the hill, that log wants to slide, it's going to bump into that, not go around, around your tractor. If you're coming up a hill, it's only going to pull away from it. And you got that little bit of swing room here. Go sideways and make a corner if you have to. So, that's how a proper hitch is made. Your chain drag in here don't mean nothing. Let that drag. Now you want to drop your hitch. You've come out of the woods. Off and dismount your tractor. Normally I would drop the, the load down, drop your three-point hitch back to the ground. And you're gonna come and you're gonna pull your brake release. The red rope. That's gonna relieve the tension. Boom. So now I'm gonna pull it back up and I'm gonna show you another thing. We got it up in the air. Say we've got three or four logs on there. And the bottom log is underneath that. And you got just a little room. So even with your winch down, you still got tension on it. So with the log up like that, you want to make sure everyone's standing clear. Release your brake and it'll just drop to the ground. And this is what where you get over spool or your bird nest belt. So that's why I was setting that tension on that screw so that when I do this, it doesn't make that spool spin in that winch and over spool your cable. It's dropped and it stopped right there. 
See that? That's all the slack I've got. So now when I go to pull it back in, the cable's still tight on our drum. Then we're going to make our unhitch, slide that out, pull that out, and normally just do this. Then you can just drive away with your chain or pull your chain up with your winch and get it out from under the log. Simple as that. Chains out. Take your chains. These winches are designed with these storage boxes on them. It's great. This is normally how I would hang my chains. I put the needle in here. Throw the chain down in the pocket. And then you put your hook in order. So this chain went in first. This one's going to be lower. Last chain goes to the top. So then when you go in the woods to deploy, you just grab and go. You got both ends of your chain and you're in business. If you don't want your chains dangling, throw them way down the pocket. They'll stay right in there. Also on this winch I want to show you is the lower pulley. Uh, camp pulley. Okay, this is magnetic. It's got a magnet right here. Flips over and sticks to that. That's so it doesn't flop around like this and bang when you're skidding. So open this up to get the cable and you push down on this button here. You detent that button all the way down and pull out this one. What that does is open this back pin up. I'm going to push it and you can see it. Lock in. Boom. Now if your cable's in there, it stays. So I'm going to show you once more. Push the button, pull that out. Swing this out. We're going to release tension on our cable. So we're going to pull the red rope. Release the brake. Pull out a little cable. Thread it right back in there. Swing this around. And then push your button back in. There you go. Now you're going to pull from the lower cable. Just like that. If you're pulling up a hill, it's better to hook down to this lower cable pulley. Because then you're not pulling from way up here and putting that torque on your tractor to do this number. The lower center of gravity you pull, the more you're going to get on a straight pull, especially coming up on a grade. Some hills may be so steep that you'll have to pull from this one. But normally on a hill pulling, I try and use my lower pulley. Pulling up a hill or down a hill. Because if you're coming down the hill, it's going to guide your log into here. It's not going to come up here and crash into your cage, which I've seen in the woods happen before myself. So just a few safety tips. These other hooks on the back of your winch, I call them rooster crowns. That's the old school term. The new school term is chain hooks. So if I had uh, several, I cut down a tree, and I usually hook my first logs are going to be on the top hooks. So when I'm pulling my skid out, I cut down the tree and I've limbed it. And I've got a bunch of big limbs I want to take out. I'm skidding firewood, let's say. So what I'll do is take this one here and hook to my furthest logs back. All the way back to the end. Get the top logs out. So I hook two of them. I've got my center log. So these are the tops. Center log, butt log. So then when you start pulling, your top logs are going to come first. And they're going to pile right up onto the second log third log and then when you get to your butt and then everything's going to come up together you'll have everything right here in a wad so normally what I do with the heavy logs is leave them hooked so I'll stop and unhitch and now I'm going to hitch the main log or the big log to this one and the second log to this one these hooks just let float so you got your chain already on your other logs and you'll just hook them up snug and tight Again, always face your hook to the rear end of the log like that. And that's where you'd use these rooster crowns or chain grabs. Hook it as snug as you can get it. Throw the rest of your chain down in the pocket. And now when I raise that up, that's going to be off the ground. So now if that was a tree hitch, I'd have the two main logs hooked to my cable. The top logs will be hooked to the sides, one on either side or one at whichever way you hook. <laughs> the reason behind that, if you get in a wet spot in the woods, you can leave the small stuff hooked because normally you could pull the small stuff then you can just jump off, release your brake and pull ahead and leave your big logs in the wet spot or just beyond it. 
get up to your dry spot and then winch your big stuff back up to the winch and move forward. So just a few skidding tips to give you and uh, you'll be on your way to happy skidding and happy foresting. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to go over was your lubrication points. There isn't a lot of them. There's one grease fitting right under here for your swivel point up here. There's another grease fitting right here on your lower pulley. This part here I always keep well lubricated so in the winter time or the rain runs out of it and it doesn't uh, rust up and seize up on you. If it does, just take it apart and clean it. It's, it's part of the, the machine. On this side of the winch over here, we have a, a PV or an axe carrier. This here is an axe carrier, what I call a pickaroon carrier, and I always put my PV in here. On the back plate of the winch is a chainsaw carrier. So you slide your bar right through there and that carries your chainsaw and you got plenty of room here to carry it. The only thing you really have to worry about now is your gas and oil for your saw. You got your chains and you got your winch and you brought your trailer in the woods. So you got everything in one load into the woods. You can pull your trees out, cut them up, throw them on the trailer and drag them out without doing a lot of unhooking. Okay, now that we're done skidding, we're going to take, uh, take the winch off the tractor. I'll go run you through that as well. So first thing we're going to do is drop our legs. Pull this out, twist it so it'll drop. Make sure it locks into place, your foot. Same thing on the other side. Pull, make sure you're locked in. The winch is in the down position now, so we're all set there. We're gonna unhook our safety chains from the PTO shaft. Unhook our PTO shaft, push the button, pull it out. Now this is where you use this little lever here, this hanger. Just unhook that, swing it out, and your PTO shaft rests right in there nicely. I always hook this back to the far end so that if it does want to slide off, it ain't gonna. It's only gonna go so far. Next, we take our third link out. You may have to take a little tension off in it because we did put tension on it when we mounted it. Let it rest on the feet. There we go, we're loose and loose. Safety pin out, pull your pin out. Set your third arm to the side, replace your pin. This will come up, hook where it should on your tractor. Next we go to our bottom pins, pull your safety pin out, remove your pin. I always let it dangle. Same thing on the driver's side, pull your safety pin. May have to just jiggle your three point a little bit. So there's a little tension on it, and there you go. We're all unhooked. I'm going to pull away, and you'll see that PTO shaft hang there. There she is. <laughs> okay, we're on. The, we got the winch dismounted now. I want to go over a few more maintenance things with you besides the grease fittings on the back. Keep them lubricated. You also got a grease fitting on your knuckles on your PTO shaft, as you can see here, one on each end. Keep them well lubed, especially if you use it a lot. We already went over how you would change a cable. You open this window up, and that's how you get to your nut on the bottom of the spool. Uh, the next thing I wanted to cover was do not oil the chain that's behind here. Behind this plate you'll see the, the drive chain. Do not oil that. If you oil that chain it's going to sling up and get on your clutch and then you're going to have problems. It'll glaze the clutch. You'll end up replacing your clutch on the machine. Secondly, if you do oil that chain it says in the owner's manual how to do it. You've got to remove it and soak it and then let it hang and dry. But uh, if you do that, it's like doing a motorcycle chain, basically the same sequence. So now I'm going to cover if you're, you've used the winch for several years, like mine, I've used, I don't know, probably eight years now. I've only had to adjust the clutch once on it, and it's probably because I was feathering it more than I should have been in a situation. So say you're pulling along and then you, your winch doesn't want to pull the same load it used to because your clutch is worn. So to adjust the clutch, you want to pull your red rope and pull out about 20 or 30 feet of cable and just let it hang. 
The winch is still has to be hooked to your tractor and operational when you do this adjustment. I got it pulled away so you could see it easier. So you pulled out your 20 feet of cable, you come back, you just bump your lever to make it like you're going to actually skid. So your brake is locked your, your, uh, and your clutch is not engaged. So you, basically you could start pulling at this point. Now you come over here with a big crescent wrench and you're going to turn this big nut. You turn this nut clockwise until you see the cable start to move in. As soon as you see the cable start to move, then you're going to back that nut off a quarter turn. And that should put you right back at your factory setting for the clutch adjustment. So if you have any questions on that, please give us a call. I'll be glad to review it again with you or one of our other technicians will. But that's simply to adjust your clutch. Never turn that nut unless you're going to adjust the clutch or dismantle the winch. A lot of questions come from this nut right here I wanted to show you. Right here, they ask why this is here. What that nut does is it actually holds the inside brake pad in place. That's factory set. You would never have to mess with that. So just ignore that that little space is there. It's not that it's not tight. That sets the distance on the brake pad so that it doesn't come off the drum pulling this way if it wants to wear on one side. That's all that nut does. So any other questions, I think you'll be free to call us. Uh, okay, all of our Uniforce winches come with an owner's manual. You'll see it, find it usually mounted in here in the chain pocket when you receive the winch. And it's marked owner's manual tube right on the top. And just open that up. There's operating instructions in here. This is a Hudson survey sheet. When you get your winch, fill that out. Please send it back. This here is the owner's manual for the winch. It gives you your pulling chart on there and everything that it was tested at the factory. So these have all been factory certified. It tells you that all. It's a little bit of broken English in that owner's manual. That's why I'm doing this video to help everybody out because sometimes it's a lot easier to watch the video like we just did and uh, you can gather a lot more information, especially out of the manual. So first hand experience, but keep your owner's manual handy. Read it before you set up the winch. You'll get some tips out of it, I'm sure. Something I didn't cover, but I think I've covered mostly everything. Yeah.